All right, guys, today we're going to be building patterns from existing parts. We're starting right now. First thing we got here is some of them are already done. So this is the ratchet part for the uh, Champion Blower and Forge. That, that part's ready to, to be molded up and cast. And this here is the cam lever, and it's almost done. And, man, I, sp I spent a lot of time sanding on this because it was really rough textured and trying to smooth it up some. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had to put this in here. I need mine to be a little bit longer, and I should have maybe put a little glue or something. It kind of came loose and has sort of damaged some of this stuff there. So I'm going to have to buddy that back up and fix that up again. But that one's pretty much about ready to go, too. The last piece we got is, uh, you know, the ratchet wheel. And uh, this is a machine surface in here, and also there's a, a threaded hole. And also this side right here is machined and that rides against something. So that needs to be machined flat. So we got to put something in here to plug this hole up and to build up a, a machining surface. Or a, sorry, what do they call that? A machining allowance. <laughs> anyway, so I went to the uh, local scrap yard and uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer so I can show you. I've already got it mounted and laid, so I don't want to take it out. So when I was at the scrapyard, I found this little piece of aluminum here, and it's got some threaded thing on that side. Uh, whatever. That that all needs to get cut off. But um, we've got this. It's even anodized, isn't that nice? But uh, we got a little chamfer right here, and what I really need that to be is uh, I need that to be kind of 90 degrees. I need it like that. Let me back this up. I got you mounted to the compound here, so kind of on a ride along. So here's that machine surface, and I want that to sit flat to that thing. And we're going to trim off all this stuff that sticks out out here. That's not necessary. And we'll probably plug that hole with a piece of wood or some putty or something like that. And uh, once we get this machined off, this is already. It's already fits good enough. It's a little, you know, we ain't gonna win no contest with that, but um, it really don't matter. There's a set screw goes here, so I'm gonna put a set screw in it. And this diameter is actually a little bit smaller than this, so I'm just gonna putty that. And we'll kind of take a, oh, just a ruler measurement here to see how much needs to get machined off, you know, when the new castings come back. So I'm gonna get set up and then, uh, We'll come back real quick. I got a left-hand carbide cutter in here, and I don't, it's just what happened to be in this block. Uh, I could have set up a new piece, but eh, whatever. You know, this is good enough. All right, let's start making some chips. <laughs> All right, let's disengage the gears over here first. Those things are noisy. All righty. Well, those are some pretty wicked chips there. It looks like it worked pretty good. Yeah. We even got the round left on there, so I don't even need to chamfer this. So, this is a good example of something that I, you know, I kind of think about. In fact, when I was over at Randy Richards' place a while back, we sort of were talking about this. I, I don't really care how thick this is, in per se. I mean, we can measure it here. What is this? It's a, it's just a little speck under three sixteenths. But it doesn't matter because once the casting comes back, all that's going to get machined away anyway. The really the important thing is how thick the original part is right now. This is just a plug. So some people get in fussing around with micrometers and stuff like that. And, uh, it really ain't necessary sometimes, you know. If it's not important how big it is, why bother wasting your time measuring it? That's, uh, yeah, that side's fine. Let's go ahead and flip this thing around. It's kind of funny. 
I went looking for a piece of you know material and I found this <laughs> but before I even got that far I spotted something in the in the scrapyard and I asked him, I go, hey, is this, uh, is that for sale? And they said, yeah, sure. So you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you what it was. And uh, man, I got it for a steal. I've been looking for one of these forever. All right, we're gonna cut off most of this waste here. Let me, uh, let me lock the back gear so this thing don't spin. All right, hopefully, since you're mounted to lathe, hopefully this ain't too rough of a ride for the camera, but we'll give it a whirl. What wow, strong aluminum. Just that little piece didn't want to even snap. Alrighty, there's another bit for the scrap pile. And you know, I know probably I should cover up the ways with a piece of wood, but for me to saw on this thing, my elbow with this hand has to be over the headstock, so when it cuts through, it really can't drop any. <clears throat> All righty, let's face this off. All right, here we go. Pretty good. We're almost at a quarter inch now. All right, chamfer these edges a little bit. All right, well. I thought I, I thought I had this finished, but I think I've uh, kind of messed up just a little bit, but nothing, nothing significant. So there's too much material out here. Uh, I should have cut it off, and maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. I'll just put a mark on here, and we'll put it back in and get it going, you know, true again. Gonna keep the uh, order of operations in mind, I guess, when you think about this sort of stuff. All right, I'm having a little trouble seeing where I'm supposed to be cutting to, so I put some dicum on there, and uh, here I'd show off my new scribe. I think this would be the first time using it here, actually. Got this from uh, Randy Richards when I was up there. We were working on that angle plate. And if you guys don't have one of these yet you need to get one from from randy boy it's a really nice tool really sh super sharp piece of carbide in there nice brass brass holder that you know becomes the handle and you can put some decorative grooves and he does all kinds of little different patterns i think with these and they're all serial numbered so uh, i think he even does like custom serial numbers if you want if you want a custom one all right we don't got too much more to take off. close here let's uh have a look and see how this fits back to 
this up. Oh, the right way at least, huh? And we're gonna take a little bit more. I think I'll take just a little tiny touch more off of that. Alright, this here will probably be just enough. Apparently this cutter likes a little bit lighter cut. Coming off there pretty all right that time. All right, that's just flush. I think I'll chamfer the inside of that because that's really sharp and nasty in there. The outside, I'm going to leave it pretty square. It's actually not really even sharp. And we'll find us a little plug or something to stick inside of this. And then I can put a a little hole in it and I got some cup screws and they can use that as a tool to help uh, pull the pattern out of the out of the sand Real good there. Okay, that's our part. Not the prettiest part in the world, but uh, this is not our end goal here, right? We're trying to make a, a ratchet wheel. So this is just a tool to get the, the other part done. All right, so I want to put some uh, wood inside of this hole here. So I started poking around and I found this dowel here and I'm not even exactly sure what size that is, but I found this drill bit here and it is a 23 30 seconds. And man, that dowel is very, very close to that. It's probably supposed to be the next size up, uh, but it's probably shrank It dried out, shrunk up a little bit. The, Dowels from the hardware store are sort of notorious for doing that. But uh, that seems pretty coincidental to me. So I think I'm going to put this... Why, why is that? Oh, yeah. Drag it past the lock. We're going to put that in here. We'll drill it out. And then we'll put that... Put a little piece of that dowel in there. We gotta, I don't think we got a key in this. All right, so I'm going to probably have to uh, change this setup just a little bit here. So give me a second. We'll come right back. 
All right, so turns out we were actually pretty lucky on that. I was able to just move the arm of the camera. And I got you on a, a Noga arm. I'll have to show you my little, I made a little special adapter to put this GoPro camera on the Noga arm. And that kind of makes it nice. I like using the GoPro here in the shop because, you know, if I had a really expensive camera, I wouldn't want all this oil and chips and, you know, cast iron dust and things like that flying around it. So we're in a watertight case and everything still. In fact, this microphone is even sort of, you know, it's supposed to be waterproof, more or less. Here, tighten this up. Maybe I'll show you my little adapter here at the end of the video, maybe. All right, let's drill this out. Now that's probably too fast. Let's slow that thing down just a bit here. That looks a little better. Okay, I think that's good. All right, well, it's still just a little bit too tight to try to just press it in. So uh, we're gonna have to bore it just a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna take too much. Almost enough where I can get it to start. You know, I gotta straighten this tool post just a little bit. wrong direction. All right, let's try this. we got Come on. not enough room for everything <laughs> get this center out right here that'll almost go let's give her another 10,000 so some more. enough it's 
Well, you know, I drove that, that dowel in there and then uh, I started thinking, you know, maybe I should just put a core print in there and then uh, I can have them put in a, this is just under three quarters of an inch, but I can have them put a core in there and, uh, you know, then I can have a hole already started and I won't have to try to drill out all that material. That should make it a little bit easier. Uh, just kind of laid my scale on here and drew a a rough line. I just don't want this to be sticking out further than those teeth, so they're going to mold it up laying this direction. So, all right, we got the wood trimmed down. Uh, this is a little thin. I'd kind of like it to fit sort of more or less in that bore pretty all right. So, uh, I just I should have found some cheaper tape. I don't know. This was just a roll of tape that happened to be laying over here. Uh, lay some tape around here and uh. See how well this fits in the bore. That should that's probably pretty close. Oh yeah. Yeah, hey. Boy. How many times you ever eyeball a press fit on something, right? Alright. Heck, that's actually tight enough to hold this part. So here's a uh originally this has a square head bolt type set screw, uh, but I don't want to use that for this. I got that set aside, but I found, you know, a modern socket head screw. And I hope that goes in there pretty good and deep. Well, it's not super deep. Wish it went a little bit more than that, but it's all right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Drive that guy all the way in. And lock it on there. Excellent. Okay, so see how that's nice and nice and deep down in there? And this plug is now set in there really good. Well, I'm not 100% sure if that all was on film or not. But, so I pushed that cork in there. And it almost went nice and flush. I just took a chisel and just kind of trimmed it. I might have to sand it here. I can feel it's kind of a little bit fuzzy. Uh, anyway, other than that... All we got to do is uh, fill in this little corner here and touch up a little bit of this stuff and give this thing here a real, real good heavy coat of paint. And that's it. We'll be taking this to the foundry tomorrow. Um, we're going to be going there to pick up uh, four castings of the angle plate, or not the angle plate, um, sorry, the surface plate pattern that I just built a few weeks back. And I don't know if I'm going to have time to get that done for uh, the deadline on the competition. But uh, I'm hoping a buddy of mine can help me do the mill work real quick. And maybe we can knock this thing out fast. Uh, I hope. <laughs> I've recently become an Amazon affiliate. So uh, I'll put some links down there. If you want to buy anything, I'll get a small percentage of that. But it, again, that won't cost you anything extra. Um, and I did promise, if you went all the way to the end of the video here, this is what I found. So I was at the, uh, the local scrap yard, you know, where they sell aluminum cans of all things, looking for some material for this uh, pattern we just worked on. And this was just sitting on the table. I guess somebody had just dropped it on the ground. The vial's broken, but, you know, that's replaceable. So pays to you know just keep an eye out for things you're looking for because uh i got this for twenty dollars well what a deal and uh it doesn't seem to be damaged any except for the broken vial uh, we'll have to put it on a surface plate maybe and check that out make sure it's still flat but uh i think even that would be repairable all right guys i hope you enjoyed that uh if you're new please subscribe just click on the old horizontal mill over here it won't cost you anything we'll catch you guys in the next video